What's up everyone? I am Jamie with 3littlegoats.com and today we're doing something a little bit different. Usually I start off my videos either doing soaping in my office or we're outside working with the animals but today we're going to start in my office and then go out to the animals because today I'm going to review this battery powered goat milker which I was a little bit skeptical of. It wasn't cheap but it was definitely not as expensive as some of the higher end that I've seen but the reason why I went with this one was because it is battery powered. I can charge it at night and I don't have to worry about plugging it in. Now if you guys have been around for a while you know we built our barn and we do have a solar panel out there as well as some batteries but it's not a whole lot of energy so I can't plug in like a big heavy duty milker out there. It just isn't sustainable and while I do have my hands that I can milk my goats I, I have really bad carpal tunnel and arthritis in my hands so the max I can milk is probably two goats at a time plus we have 11 goats that we're breeding this fall so that's a lot of goats to milk in the springtime by hand and it'll take a very long time so I figure let's try out this milk machine and see how it works out. Now the reviews on Amazon were mixed some people hate it some people love it I have been using it for just over a month now on one goat that we have in milk and I can honestly say I love it. Now I have forgotten to put the battery pump on the charger a few times so I've been able to get a few milkings out of it out of one charge which is great so I know when I have more goats in milk I could probably milk them all at once. I do plan on probably getting a second whole milking system once all the goats are in milk that way we can do more than one at a time. So if you decide to get this particular model, I will link it down below. It's going to come with some things in the box. It's not going to come with this. This is something different. But you are going to get this giant milk bucket, which is huge. It's actually a little bit too big for just the one goat that we're milking right now because we're only milking for once a day. So you could really milk probably at least two good milkers into one container before you have to empty it out. We also will get a bunch of extra hose and clamps, which is nice. You'll get the pump unit. And then you'll get the two tea cups and all the hose. And the great thing about this is if you're horrible at instructions like I am, everything is numbered. You have a one, two, and a two, and a three. And then the hoses are all numbered. Two, three, and so... I know exactly where everything goes and I don't have to second guess myself. Now the one thing I will say I don't like about this bucket is, well one it's too big for me right now, that's why I downgraded to a smaller bucket that I can connect this machine to, but in order to release the heat off of your goat you have to clamp the hose and then release the pressure from this valve right here and they are very hard to get off of here. And while these do a good job at crimping the hose, they don't really crimp it completely. So it was kind of hard to pull those off to get the teacups safely off of the goats. And then one of the other downsides to this machine is it is, it's kind of loud. I mean, any pulsating milk machine is going to be loud, but this one is definitely loud. I'm going to turn it down real quick. If you plan on keeping it out by your milking station, you can always just build a box to kind of insulate it if the sound gets to you. It doesn't bother my goats, it doesn't bother me, so it's not really a big issue for me. But the one thing I can say is that I love is it's pulsating. So it's not that constant pull on the teeth. These are actually pulsating, so it's very gentle on the goats. Alright, so I'm going to set this up so we can go and milk Sadie. She is our doe that is in milk right now. She's a very impatient milker, so milking by hand was kind of a pain in the butt with her. But with the milker, she kind of kicks and dances at first, but then she settles into it and she has no problems with it. Alright, so now we are going to set this up. Since I only milk the one goat Sadie, I'm going to just use this milker bottle that I already had. It already has the same type of connections which I love so I can use the smaller bottle and not have to take this out with me all the time. So we're going to just set this up real quick. Alright, if I can remember how. So, we've got a one which goes here. 
and then the three technically is labeled on the other container but that goes in here and then you have one more hose that connects straight from the motor into your milk collector and that's it now we're just we're ready to go milk now another thing I like about this is how compact it is when I take it out I actually just got one of these baskets from the Dollar Tree it cost a dollar and everything fits in here perfect I can simply just set everything in nice and neat And all I have to do when I go out to milk is just grab the two cups and start milking. All right, so it is getting about time for evening chores. So now let's take the milker out and I'll show you how it works. It's pretty easy, but first we got to get all the girls in. I believe they're all still out in the big pasture or they're hiding behind. Oh, they're here. Yeah, they heard me coming. Figure I should probably give it a try Baby, check it out See what it's all about But the traffic was fast And the money was slow The people I met you never get to know I kind of miss this place I used to live back home Cause up here it's brand new So Sadie is an impatient milker, so I kind of have to make this quick. Of course, the first thing I'm going to do is clean off the teats. Get that first squeeze out. She's also a very loud eater. All right, so I'm going to bring you in closer and show you how we do it. All right, so I actually keep the bucket and the machine on the ground, and then I just grab my teat cups and it's going to get loud in here because you got to turn it on in order to get them to stick. And then you just kind of hold them there for a second and then you'll see the teats start to pulsate. Once you get a good connection, you'll actually see that they do pulsate really, really well. And with Sadie, she gives about a quart of milking and it takes about five, six minutes to do it. All right, now that she's done, the way I disconnect them is I turn the machine off and then I just break the seal by opening up the valve on the milk bucket and they come right off. And then it doesn't say this in the instructions that I believe, but I like to turn the machine back on after I remove the cups. That way I can get all the milk that's in the lines into the bucket. Understand it, that's all right by me. I got everything that I need, but there is break. All right, so it is it's a gorgeous evening. The sun is setting, the temperatures are it's it's 82 degrees. It's almost October and it's 82 degrees, but surprisingly it's not too hot, so I'm not really complaining. So all the evening chores are done. The kids and Jesse are just finishing up the last few things. And now we gotta go take the milk in and I'll show you how I process it out of the milker and how I clean the milker. It's actually pretty easy. Everybody knows my name. All my friends are still the same. I guess the all right, so this is a really awkward angle. 
But the way I clean my milker is fairly simple. I turn the hottest water I have on my faucet, which is pretty hot. I put some soap in there as well as just a teaspoon of bleach and then I run the milker until the container is completely full. So let's do that real quick. What I sought when I ran was back where I began. No matter the rain, no matter. And then I really don't even fill the water up too high, just enough to get the teats and the cups in there. And I'm just gonna drop them down in and make sure they stay submerged, and I'm just gonna run the milker. Then once I've filled up this container with the soapy bleach water, empty it out. Then I empty my sink out, put the container back on. And now I'm gonna fill the sink up with cold water and clean out all the bubbles. And now we just run cold water through it to clean all the lines out. Turn off the light, I'm coming home. And that is it for cleaning the lines out. Now all I do for the rest of it is I take the lid off and I wash the top. Then I disconnect these hoses. And I hang it to dry. Now I have a hook up on my cabinet that I can hang these from. Eventually when we build our house, I'll have a dedicated sink that I can hang them from. And then I just let them hang dry until the morning and then I put it away for the next day. Alright y'all, so that is what I've got for you guys today. Like I said, I will link the milker that I used down in the description box. But if you have any questions that I may have missed, let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. We put out homestead vlogs every Tuesday and we are putting out Soaping Saturday videos again. And they will probably be every other Saturday for the foreseeable future until I can get caught up with some projects around the house. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. No matter the rain, no matter the storm, I'm coming home. Oh, I'm coming home.